Mean Business on North Ganson Street, written by S. Craig Zoller. S. Craig Zoller has proven himself to be one of the best new auteur filmmakers. He made his directorial debut in 2015 with Bone Tomahawk, a top-notch western with an extremely effective horror turn in the last act. This put him on my radar to watch closely, and the second directorial effort did not disappoint. The rule-breaking grindhouse throwback brawl in Cell Block 99 cemented Zoller as one of my favorite filmmakers. I am eagerly anticipating his next film, Dragged Across Concrete, which should be coming out later this year, hopefully. Hopefully it gets wide release, too. Being a fan of Zoller's work, it was a pleasant surprise to learn that he had already established himself as a successful author in advance of his film career. The writing within his two feature films are absolute standouts of the years in which they were made. Both Bone Tomahawk and Brawl in Cell Block 99 had some of the best dialogue and character work around. It was exciting to learn that he had more material for me to experience. I'd just like to take a moment here to admire how goddamn good Zoller is at titling his works, Bone Tomahawk, Brawl in Cell Block 99, Dragged Across Concrete, Wraiths of the Broken Land, A Congregation of Jackals, and the subject of this review, Mean Business on North Ganson Street, are all badass titles. Mean Business follows Detective Jules Bettinger as he is forced to relocate from Arizona to Victory, Missouri, dubbed the worst city in America. This relocation takes place after a short scene that brilliantly sets up the protagonist. Bettinger is a great detective, but he's blunt, witty, rude, and has little patience for those on the other end of a conflict. A businessman speaks to Bettinger at the police station about the disappearance of his wife, and the blunt detective gives it to him straight. That she isn't in danger, she skipped him with his money, and never loved him. On his way out the door, the businessman steals an officer's gun and kills himself. Thus, Bettinger is relocated as punishment. Our protagonist has an excellent way with language. He's chock full of smarmy comebacks and witty jabs. But he doesn't use this clever language to dress up or soften the intent behind his words. He is direct and to the point and doesn't mind being seen as an asshole. This is a character trait that could be cliche. There are a great many protagonists who are constructed with a similar formula, particularly in procedural television. The number of protagonists who can be described by the line, he's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues. It's a little overwhelming how many there are. A lot of these are good, actually. A lot of these are quite good, but the formula is apparent. He's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues, Sherlock. He's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues, House. He's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues, Rake. He's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues, Backstrom. He's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues, Bosch. He's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues, Monk. He's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues, Psych. He's great at solving cases, but he has personality issues, Inspector Morse. He's great at solving... Honestly, this list could go on and on and on. This is all to say that while the mean business on North Ganson Street protagonist could potentially fit this mold, he never feels cliche. His personality comes across wonderfully, and he makes for a really fun, well-defined character. A great protagonist to follow through this incredibly dark story. Bettinger's family is also well-developed, especially his wife and the relationship that the two of them share. There's a bit of characterization that I love for the wife's character, where every time she laughs, it sounds like there's an old man in her chest having a fit, and Bettinger loves to get that oldster chuckling. Their relationship is sweet and provides an excellent balance to Bettinger's disposition. She's a great character in her own right as well, not just in relationship to the story's lead. She's a painter, and as the story progresses, we learn more about her as a person and as an artist. The trajectory of her career with a highly lauded gallery to feature her work provides a good foil to the dangerous and consuming work of her husband. In many detective stories, an aside to explore the protagonist's family can feel like little more than a distraction to the central plot. But here, every time Bettinger took a minute to call home while on the job, I was fully invested and grew to like the characters more and more. The novel is host to a bevy of antagonistic characters. The main baddie is left a mystery for a good chunk of the book, and even after the reveal, they are exclusively referred to without actually being present until the very end. This isn't an issue at all, as there is a strong secondary cast of antagonists, with a mysterious man called EVK being particularly menacing, partly due to his horrific actions, but also due to how little we learn about him as a reader, a great example of how to create intrigue by withholding information. In addition to the antagonistic characters, the book is also set in an oppressively antagonistic setting. The fictional setting of Victory, Missouri is easily the most engrossing aspect of mean business on North Ganson Street. Victory is a city comprised almost exclusively of criminals. Not even the police maintain order. The police that are present are largely corrupt, and the entirety of the law enforcement is a constant target to violent killers. Victory is the kind of city where the street signs have all been decapitated, and you gauge which turn to take by the severed cat head nailed to the telephone pole. It's a brutal place, and Zoller's description of it is rich and consuming in the best way. 
It's a setting that I could spend much more time in as a reader. There are a few smaller confrontations between Bettinger and the cop-hating locals, and more of these instances would have been welcome. The world building is incredibly strong and contributes greatly for my desire to see the story as a feature film, or even the setting as a television series. I looked into it after finishing the book, and according to the deadline, the film rights were actually acquired by Warner Brothers way back in 2013, with Zoller set to write the script and the film set to star Leonardo DiCaprio and Jamie Foxx. I would hope Zala would be able to direct it as well, but there's no director attached, and it doesn't look like their production has moved forward since then. As much as I like DiCaprio and Fox, I don't think they fit the roles. According to Deadline, DiCaprio is supposed to be playing the lead detective Jules Bettinger, which is definitely not right, since Bettinger is described as having skin as dark as outer space without the stars. And Jamie Foxx is set to play his partner, who is constantly described as being absolutely massive, but Jamie Foxx is only 5'9", far from a behemoth. Still, that's an easier change than a complete race swap, which is pretty important in the character. If I were to cast it, I'd go with someone like Lance Reddick or Michael K. Williams as Bettinger, and someone like Tiny Lister Jr. or Terry Crews as his partner. The entire story is very cinematic, and the short chapters, many lasting only a page or two, made the pacing feel considerably more film-like than your average book as it moved from scene to scene. Mean Business on North Ganson Street pulls no punches. It's mean, it's brutal, it's cool, it's witty, and one hell of a read. I was reading it quite late one night and had to put it down before I fell asleep. I had a dream in the book's world that I finished the rest of the book first thing in the morning. A novel hasn't grabbed me like that in a long time. I highly recommend it. I have a review for another S. Craig Zeller book coming up. That's Corpus Chrome, Inc. That'll be up very soon. And I'm in the process of reading A Congregation of Jackals. I'll, I might review that one as well. I'm a big fan of S. Craig Zoller. I'll check out anything with his name attached. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out more videos we got coming out here. I'll see you in the next video.